Well, he describes himself as black, queer, disabled, and fabulous. His name is Edin Dopu, and he'll be the first ever physically disabled person to head to space. Dopu says he wants to address the UN General Assembly from space to show others that there's nothing one cannot achieve. Our reporter, Lindy Wesitole, spoke with Dopu. Eddie, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Now let's talk about a trip that most people would only dream of taking. You are going to space and you will be not only that, but you will be a first, the first disabled person to go there. Yes, first physically disabled person to travel into space. And the idea really is to be able to address the world from the edge of the planet as the first wheelchair user up in space. What is the process of doing something of this magnitude? Well, I'm absolutely delighted to be partnering with MTV and the United Nations on uh, this groundbreaking campaign to address the world from the edge of the planet as the first wheelchair user in space. And the message really is, regardless of who you are, you are able to achieve the extraordinary. And I can't help but think about the words of Dr. Madiba when he once said that it always seems impossible until it's done. When you get there, you say you want to send a message from space to, to people the and the world, our yes. world leaders. What's that message? The message is it's really for any young person that has ever felt excluded. Uh, we are all working towards the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which is about leaving nobody behind. There are one billion people with disabilities on the planet and people with disabilities still experience exclusion, isolation, trauma on an epic scale. And this is a symbolic moment to say that the words disability and possibility belong in the same sentence. What sort of challenges have you experienced maybe in your own personal life? Well, I think the challenges are every day. As a person with a disability, you navigate a society that was never really built for you. Um, and, you know, it, it, but I think what is really special about this campaign is that we are transcending those structural barriers. We are saying that if to say something meaningful about inclusion, we're going to have the ultimate stage, which is in space, and make space inclusive for people with disabilities. And that symbolic moment, I think, will do so much to shift attitudes and change perceptions um, about disability. And in our everyday lives, how can we shift attitudes? How can we educate ourselves on disabilities? Well, I think we need to give visibility. We need to give visibility and we need to give voice. Uh, we need to amplify the voices of people with disabilities. There are so many extraordinary disabled people doing remarkable things but we don't amplify that. We don't talk about that enough. And I think that representation really matters. And that's why I am doing this. It's really the ultimate form of representation. You've been advocating social change for years now. You even have your own initiative that you founded. Tell us about that initiative and tell us about the work that you've done. I founded the Evolve Initiative when I was at Oxford University and in fact I became the first African with a degenerative disability to graduate from Oxford University. Um, and this is really the initiative that I founded, Evolve Initiative, is about closing the access gap. It's about moving beyond zero and beyond zero for me is not just access to the built environment but access to joy, to abundance, access to an extraordinary life and that's really what my advocacy is about. I remember you saying the biggest achievement for you was living beyond the age of five and doctors thought you wouldn't make it beyond yeah. that age. Absolutely. Now you're 27 years old, you just turned I just turned 28. I just, just turned, turned 28. 28, yeah. It's pretty extraordinary and so, you know, I, I you know, every day that passes there isn't I, there is no time to sort of play it small. Um, I, I've already outlived myself by 23 years, so I might as well use the life that I have, that I've been given, to achieve the extraordinary. Tell us about your medical condition. 
I was born with a condition called spinal muscular atrophy. It's a motor neuron uh, condition, so it affects the voluntary muscles and it results in progressive weakness. So the older I get, the weaker I become. Um, and it's very rare for babies born with SMA to survive uh, beyond the first few years of life. Um, so it's really, really, really extraordinary that I'm sitting here um, in front of you today uh, with this dream of, of, of wanting to um, elevate consciousness around the world. So having done so much in your life, what's next? What's next is really to use my life for a vision and a purpose that is greater than myself. And I think the first step to doing that is really to embark on the celestial journey into space and addressing the world from space. Uh, after that, I think it is, we'll see, we'll see. The but I'm, I'm just beginning. The sky is not the limit. You're proving that the sky is not the, sky the limit. The sky is not the limit, it's just the beginning.